thank you for tuning in to We Talk Weeklies after the talk with WPPM LP Philadelphia. Yeah, this is one of the hottest radio shows that talks Charles's favorite segment, love and relationships. Oh, <laughs> Whatever. Gives the good news and the bad news, and of course, the latest in entertainment news with the sizzle. Yeah, sizzle. Dope. Yeah. So make sure you keep it locked to We Talk Weeklies after the talk with your boy Charles Gregory and the beautiful Lauren Sizzle. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on 106.5 FM. So here we go, here we, here we, here we go. Woo! What's up, y'all? It's your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful Lauren Sizzle. And we got the beautiful. Do it one more again. Here we go. There we go. That's that stuck button right here, man. I had to George Bush the button. Yeah. It was stuck. You all right? No, sometimes things get stuck. Sometimes you get stuck in a rut. You know, you get stuck in your ways. Woo! You know, a lot of things get stuck, right? Your bank account gets stuck at the same thing and don't go nowhere, no higher. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful. Lawrence Sizzle. And the beautiful. Classy Lady Sparkle. Got Lady Estada in the building. Our social media What's social up? media sensation in the building also, man. But you know what? We got a jam-packed show. And oftentimes, when we have a jam-packed show, man, we just got to go straight for it. Man. But before we do that, you got to tell me how was your day. How was your day? Um, my day was pretty good. Okay. You know, I, I can't complain like I used to. Uh-huh. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Nice. Today was a good day. Okay. Good day. Well, I know. People don't get a lot of good Tuesdays. <laughs> I know that's right. There you go. What's about you, classy lady? Uh, mine was cool. I um, I'm told that there was a storm that I slept through. So, <laughs> oh, you everybody slept, said it was a the, storm. The tornado. Yeah, you, you slept through. I, I hear nothing, nothing yeah. at all. Nope. This weather no. been crazy. So I'm good. I sleep like an old ninety year old lady. <laughs> 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 Not a baby, because they wake up. She's I sleep like old, a 90-year-old year lady. Year old lady. Uh, yeah. So I had a good geez, day. We, you had a good day? Well, if you had a good day, I had a good day. Our social media sensation. How are we looking at the camera? We good? She gave me the thumbs up, so give it to me, man. Good news and bad news, oh, man. We, we got it. Oh, that's quick. All yeah. right. We're going to go into the bad news. This past week, three historically black churches in Louisiana, Cajun, and Creole County were set ablaze and burned to the ground in the past 10 days by the hands of an evil 21-year-old white male named Holden Matthews. He's the son of a chief deputy. According to Governor John Bell Edwards, who who called the blaze a reminder of a very dark past time of intimidation and fear, and that dark time he speaks of is in 1963 when four little black girls died in a church fire in Birmingham, Alabama, by a Ku Klux Klan member named Robert Chambliss, who was initially cleared of murder and sentenced to only six months in jail. Mm. Well, now here, history is repeating itself. Okay. Holden Matthews, the son of Sheriff Deputy Roy Matthews, stated he was shocked and hurt as any father would be. Um, all the churches were built in rural areas areas decades ago and has served generations of predominantly black families new orleans fbi special agent eric new orleans, new orleans there you go <laughs> agent eric rommel said his team has been working with local law enfor- enforcement agencies to determine get this y'all uh-huh. whether the incidents were motivated by bias Oh, now I put the you name, think? I put I it here, evil 21 year old white male. They said young man in the you, article. But you know what, how they always got to flip it. I was like, oh my gosh. Oh now my we God. heard about the Notre Dame Cathedral burning right, down. Right, right. I didn't hear anything hardly about this. Anyway, right. there were no injuries of, and the church was empty before the fire started. Well, thank God it, there were no, no lives lost. Right, right, yeah. right. That's the main thing. Yes. But um, hopefully all the churches had insurance and they're able to build bigger and better. And then they can tell Holden Matthews, okay, you know, we got a bigger and better church now. Right, but there's right. so many memories there, weddings, funerals, people who yeah. have had generations of baptisms and stuff there. So, right, right. But that was your bad news. Okay. Here's some good, good news. news. Please. Okay, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Don't complain about it. And that was from the uh, late prophetic Maya Angelou. And that what this young man is doing. He's a 12-year-old, Monty Scott. 
He has fixed the potholes in Muskegon Heights, Michigan's neighborhood. Monty Scott. Um, can you get him to Philadelphia, please? <laughs> I'm not going to do that to that young man. I'm waiting to hear I give him a round of applause. I'm trying to tell you. Go ahead. Monty Scott stepped up after his mother and grandmother's cars got flat tires on the road. Right, right, right. Monty's grandmother said they had a half a day off at school, so he was out for the afternoon. He took a shovel and a garbage can full of dirt from our garden, and he started filling the holes. He filled about 15 to 20 of them, roughly 50 potholes on the street in just a few hours. Is that your uh, ex? <laughs> that sounds about what, what kind of ex? Oh, that's the New Orleans? Uh, you know, okay. well, that's, that's his grandma. grandma. Oh, that's, that's my grandma. Okay. grandma. I'm trying All right. to get All right, no doubt, no doubt. Okay, Monty's mother also said she isn't surprised by her son's initiative. He's that type of kid kid he's right, right. always had a big heart monty told C- cnn affiliates that i just wanted to do i just want anyone else i didn't want anyone else to get a flat tire and i know that this is only a band-aid monty is scheduled to meet the governor due to helping his community well, i was getting ready to say so, don't be surprised if he grows up and he's the next mayor of the city or you know fantastic, yeah. yeah he didn't complain okay. about it he yeah. just went out and did don't it like grandma said it, he right? just came home he said oh grandma got a flat tire Grab the garbage can, yes. got some dirt, and he know it's a band aid, but it's gonna work for the minute. So that's your good news and bad we need news. Need to talk to our city right now, man. <sighs> that's uh, yeah. that ain't we'll going to happen. Well, that was your good news and bad news, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. It's your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful Lawrence and the beautiful classy lady Sparkle. And we got Lady Einstein in the building. Uh, up, you know y'all? what? We're gonna do something a little different because I want to go. Can we go right into the sizzle? For- let me do this. Shit. I, I all right, hold on. Let's, let's, so let's let's just get a little station ID and all that old good old stuff, and we'll be right back, y'all. A couple seconds. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Hello. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your girl Lauren Sizzle, and you are tuned into one of the hottest talk shows in the nation. We talk weeklies after the talk. Make sure you tune in each and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And you can listen anywhere. Just download the TuneIn Radio app. Look for WPPM 106.5 FM on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. And I got some good news for you. You want to binge listen to our shows? Follow We Talk Weeklies after the talk podcast on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, and Spreaker. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out all of our amazing shows and event coverage. And follow We Talk Weekly on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And most importantly, keep it locked. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful Lauren Sizzle and the beautiful Classy Lady Sparkle. Man, like I said, we have a jam packed show today. Today, mm-hmm. so coming up next, what we got coming up next? Man? We got the sizzle. <laughs> we got the sizzle. Give it to him early, yes, sir. So, Wendy Williams, she has finally broken her silence after filing for divorce from husband Ke- Kelvin Hunter, Kevin Hunter, also known. Uh, yes. After 22 years of marriage, so the estranged couple have an 18-year-old son together, Kevin Hunter Jr., and Wendy claimed ir- irreconcilable differences. Um, That's as- 18? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. He I mean, is 18. Wow. Yes. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's like 18-year-old son. That's a yeah. grown man right there. I'm still, for some reason, <laughs> I'm still thinking the kid is little. That is a I'm grown sorry. man right there. Yes. Mm. So um, she's saying irreconcilable differences as the reason for filing for, for divorce from Kevin. And according to NBC News, the document states that the irreconcilable differences have caused the breakdown of the marriage, which make it appear that the marriage should be dissolved as there is no reasonable prospect of reconciliation. So a rep for Wendy is saying that Kevin is supportive of Wendy and they are working through this process together. But everybody knows for years the marriage has battled allegations of cheating and abuse on behalf of Kevin Hunter as the divorce comes on the heels of Kevin Hunter's alleged to he's alleged to be the father of his mistress of his alleged mistress because, you know, still alleged Mm -hmm. um, 10 years of 10 years. Sharina Hudson's child, which that has not been confirmed yet either. So, Sharina Hudson came here to Philly to have her baby at Hahnemann University Hospital. Wow. This was back in March. Meanwhile, you know, Wendy was in the Queen's sober living house. Hmm. Well, Wendy, how you doing? 
<laughs> so Wendy, she seems to apparently be doing fine. So Wendy mm-hmm. finally became the topic of her show segment, Hot Topics, where she took the opportunity to address her pending divorce. So Wendy mentioned her motto for her um, Hot Topics segment, which is their business is our business. She also said it's crazy how now my business is your business. It's kind of funny. Turnabout's a fair game. I get it. So she was saying that as she, you know, talked about her business on the show. And she talked about how she's moving out of the sober house and how she's planning a new life for her and her son. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's levels to this. It's yeah. levels to this. So Kevin, he finally broke his silence in a statement issued to Entertainment Tonight where he said, I'm not proud of my recent actions and take full account of accountability and apologize to my wife, my family. I'm like your wife. But anyway, my wife, my family, and her amazing fans, and I'm going through a time of self-reflection and I am and am trying to right some wrongs. No matter what the outcome is or what the future holds, we are still the Hunter family and I will continue to work with and fully support my wife in this business. He ain't and letting through go. any and all or obstacles she may face. <laughs> yes. Living her new life of sobriety while I also work on mine. Please give me and my family privacy as we heal. While he also works on his oh. sobriety? Y- yes. Oh, he's yes. blaming it on yes. us. Yes. So, um, do we left. know, because she never said what she was in rehab for. Do we know that? Mm-hmm. She said, she mentioned alcohol. Mm-hmm. She did mention alcohol. Um, okay. I'm so sure it might be. it's not be. what Greg Mathis was talking about? Hmm. <laughs> it's, I'm sure it's probably more <laughs> to that. If but, anybody heard that. You know, uh, yes. So, <laughs> things seem to be getting even worse for Kevin Hunter, okay? So, it appears that one of his artists, known as I, um, Avion Fallstar, did an interview with Unwind with Tasha K where he's making all kinds of accusations, including claims of an alleged sexual and abusement relationship between him and Kevin. And this was in 2018. And Mm. Avion was Kevin's boy toy. Okay. What? Avion, whose real name is Avion Williams, claims to have also witnessed Kevin's physical abuse against Whitney. I mean, Wendy. Mm. Avion makes men- mention of Kevin being obsessed with alleged mistress Sharina Hudson, but apparently Sharina didn't love him like that, but she, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Kevin, che- and she cheated on Kevin. Wendy was cheating on Kevin also. It just was a whole, uh, you know, you messy. gotta, when I tell you, <laughs> I had to, yes, this whole interview that Avion did with Tasha K, I could not turn away from it because it was crazy Mm. it was so crazy he's talking about how when he first you know he got signed he was getting signed to him and then that's when the um you know the alleged it wasn't like um intimate or anything like that it was just it was what it was the the encounters or whatever like that you know he was like it was it was him, like, it was like a control thing or something like that. I don't know. But you got to watch it because mm. it is it, crazy. So he hasn't responded to that yet. Kevin hasn't responded to the allegations of this whole him messing with one of his artists. But And some you know. in gay activity. Mm-hmm. I happen to see that. Mm-hmm. And uh, accusation. Well, it wasn't an accusation. He said that it was what it was. Yeah. That was a little heavy. Yeah, yeah, and and he also talked about. I'm not even gonna get into that because it is deep. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. He was he was going in saying some rated R stuff. So I'm gonna just wow. leave that alone. I'm gonna leave that alone. But mm. check that out. Unwind with Tasha K. Check that out when you get a chance. Mm-hmm. And finally, moving right along to my last story. Rappers and fans of the late great Grammy nominated rapper, entrepreneur, community activist Nipsey Hussle right. are calling for the firing of Fox News host Laura Ingram hmm. after her controversial coverage of Nipsey's memorial. So check this clip out. Wow. Yes. Mm. Check out this clip. Yeah, so as as we're pulling up the clip um, right now, so I'm just going to kind of go into what some of the, before we listen to the clip, what some of the um, rappers are saying. The game said on Instagram, quote, we are no longer laying quiet while you continuously disrespect our brother, culture, African Americans as a whole. I will use my platform and call on my peers to do the same. Nip's passing nor his legacy 
is to be taken lightly as there will be con- consequences for any disrespect now or in the future as long as I have a voice. And then Snoop had commented on the game's post and said, I'm in. And then T.I. also reposted the clip of Laura's coverage um, and with the caption, discussed it. My expe- expectations have already decreased so much for mankind in the past couple weeks that this is hardly surpri- that this hardly surprised me. And you, so, no, I was going to say we got the clip. Okay, let's take a listen. You want to finish? The clip. And no, we'll play take, yeah, take a listen. To let's the take clip. a listen to the clip. Line the streets to say goodbye to rapper Nipsey Hussle. Now, this dear artist recently released a song called FDT. F Donald Trump. Okay, now that's a very creative refrain. Very catchy. Very catchy. catchy. Irving it, Berlin, is look it, out. Is it? <laughs> It all began and ended with Irving Berlin yeah. for you, didn't it? Yeah. Um, so the the refrain, the chorus, it goes on and on. Is that related to the lowest unemployment ever, basically, oh, okay. for African Americans? It- wow. So you heard that, right? Now my thing is, this is a day after the memorial for Nipsey Hussle. This man has just passed away, and you take it upon yourself. I have to, you know, refrain from getting angry. I'm trying my best. Mm -hmm. I don't. You take it upon yourself to flip this story, to put in, you know, this song. Instead of, like, saying, you know, know, people came out and supported the memorial, you want to take this opportunity to bring up a song where that was YG's song. Mm -hmm. He was featured on the song. That was YG's song. And then you want to say, oh, you know... is this in response to the lowest unemployment rate for wow. African Americans? Like this is so disrespectful on so many levels. It's disrespectful to Nipsey's family, to Lauren London, to Nipsey himself, of course. Mm-hmm. To the black community. To the black community. Wow. Like it, it's just so disgusting. Now there is a public outcry for Laura Ingram to be removed from Fox News. First of all, who are you to even speak to the case of what any African American is is uh suffering from or mm-hmm. you believe they're suffering from? Who are you to do that? Exactly. I can't sit around and talk to the case of women as a black man, right? I can't talk mm-hmm. to the case of women and how they feel internally, emotionally, right? I can't talk to that case. I could talk to the case of me. Or men, black men. So who are you as a white conservative female to talk to the case of any black mm, disenfranchised, may I say, Mm. group or constituents of people? Who are you? Exactly. Exactly. I had to. I can get mad and I can get on my soapbox. I'm sorry. I don't want to (laughs) hijack your segment. I'm going to just go ahead and let you wake up. Exactly, it, and if people are calling for her to be removed, Fox News has think- not, and or nor Laura Ingram Ingram have responded to to you know people asking for her to be removed. We need that same energy we Keep gave it. Kodak yep. Black to give to her. Exactly. We no, 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 no. I'm not even yeah. going to use our. No, I ain't going to use our people. No, I'm just saying. No, he, no, 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 no. I'm not. No, no, uh, uh-uh. uh, no, 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 no. We're not going to use our people to talk to that point. Let's mm-hmm. stay on her. Right. Let's use that same energy as they right. do when they are disenfranchising us. And we exactly. respond to that. Right. Gucci. Mm-hmm. Right. See that energy yep. we had mm-hmm. that. That's a, that's a corporate mm-hmm. structure. Right. That came to us. Right. Or affected us. Prada. Mm-hmm. A lot of mm-hmm. these people in that white corporate structure. The reason why Kaepernick chose to nil that white corporate structure. Mm-hmm, I'm right. not going to talk about our disparities mm-hmm. and what we do in home, mm-hmm, in our mm-hmm, community, and mm-hmm. as our people. Nah, we keep that same energy. Exactly. Nah. Yeah. Somebody had um, tweeted out because a lot of people are know. are tweeting out things to her and commenting on her. Cause they she's should trying to, be. She's trying to post things and go about her life as normal, and mm-hmm. people are commenting and and like 
hashtag and um r.i.p nipsey hustle you know putting the gifts on there with nipsey hustle somebody even posted her sponsors mm-hmm. so what you do you go. right exactly i retweeted that let's what keep you that do, energy let's talk energy yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you go to those sponsors and tell them that you're no longer going to patronize Ooh. them as long as they are sponsoring her you hit them in their pockets I thought that's like they a, that's actually good was cackling. Bad news in- they was they were giggling. They were laughing. They were laughing at yeah. a man's death. That, yes, <sighs> absolutely, mm. absolutely. What's that? The sizzle. That sounds like good news yes. and bad news. I'm your girl Lauren Sizzle, and that was the sizzle. And that was the sizzle, ladies and gentlemen. Your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful Lauren Sizzle and the beautiful classy ladies. Got Lady Estate in the building. What we got coming up next, Lady Estate? Ah, we got one of my favorites. Don't say Drake. <laughs> and I said one of my favorites, oh, not dude, one of your dude. favorites. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, and we know how much you love right, right, up right, here. Right, 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 right. <laughs> to be the <Vito> fall. <laughs> Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your girl, Lauren Sizzle, and you are tuned in to one of the hottest talk shows in the nation, We Talk Weekly's After the Talk. Make sure you tune in each and every Tuesday at 7 p.m., and you can listen anywhere. Just download the TuneIn Radio app. Look for WPPM 106.5 FM on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. And I got some good news for you. You want to binge listen to our shows? Follow We Talk Weekly's After the Talk podcast on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, and Spreaker. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out all of our amazing shows and event coverage. And follow We Talk Weekly on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And most importantly, keep it locked. Yo, why not put me on an island somewhere, man? Now I want to take a vacation somewhere. You know, I don't even like catching no planes. I'm trying to tell you. I ain't long, if, if, if Amtrak can't get there or the bus or car, I ain't trying to go there. I know it's, that's bad, right? Nah, I'm just saying. I'm stuck in my hood, man. I just product of my environment, as they say. Barcode is on me. Well, this is your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful Lauren Sizzle and the beautiful Classy Lady Sparkle. Classy Lady Sparkle is definitely in the building, man. So check this out. We have some. We have a special guest that jumped in. You know, compliments of a good friend of ours. Sizzle, you want to jump right in and tell us who we have today? So we we have Mr. Jock Wambush yes. Jr. Um, he is the chief deputy sheriff. He was responsible for management operational planning, development, and implementation of office policy, and oversaw all procedures for the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office for over five years. He also was responsible for implementing a Homeland Security Unit Mm. whose major responsibility was courtroom security and evacuation. As a civil servant, Jock practiced responsible fiscal government formulated policies, oversaw a budget of over $12 million, secured and negotiated government contracts and bid processes, and administered over 236 employees. Wow. wow. Welcome to the show. Yes. Welcome to the show. And he's an Thank alumni you. of Temple University. T.U., she had to get that in it. T.U. Yes. Uh, yes. Hashtag yes. T.U.M.F. <laughs> If you don't know what that means, then you ain't from them, all right? He has a very extensive uh, bio. There you go. Yes, there you go. We're going to talk a little bit about it. Unfortunately, yeah. we don't have a lot of time, but I wanted to make sure we at least got him in here because, you know, this this brother just threw his hat in the race, correct? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, one, uh, your platform and why people should vote for you? Okay. Well, simply because um, I'm experienced. Okay. I have a plan. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to move this plan out. And I'm running for the future of Philadelphia, for young folks, for, for the seniors who need someone to make sure that their wealth is carried out to their, uh, their uh, relatives, that they're not uh, shortchanged, that when wills get uh, probated in office that they're authentic, and that uh, the right folks are, you know, are administrating the, these estates. So um, as we prepare for our campaign to move out, we want to uh, be able to go into the community and we want to ha- hold seminars. So folks get to know what the Register of Wills Office does, uh, how you prepare a will, that wills are um, everlasting, mm. that once you someone has a will and lets someone uh, uh, probates a, a, 
another will at a later date, right. and that will is going to stand. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing that on Sundays we have a thing called Sunday office, okay. that we go to um, churches and other uh, institutions, and again, uh, kind of share our experience in our office, what we do, how we do it, if you need help. Um, so we look at doing those type of things. Also, as uh, Register Wills, you're the clerk of Orphan's Court, and that means you uh, appoint attorneys to uh, uh, people who have uh, estates there who are uh, mentally ill, who may be uh, um, in uh, a state of, uh, of uh, you know, noncompliance, uh, maybe poor. And we want to make sure that the right attorneys are involved, that folks aren't getting talked into situations where they're selling their properties. But you never know what's going on. The gentleman in the office now has been there for 42 years. Okay. It's time to change. I know that's It's right. time to be more, more uh, uh, you know, transparent mm-hmm. to what really goes on in this office. So, you know, we're here to, to make a change. We're here for the citizens of Philadelphia. We're here to, to, to know that uh, things are legitimate and that folks are going to be able to carry on. Because you look around this city, it looks like some folks never even lived here before. Yes. Mm. The way this property is disappearing and moving around. So that's why we're running. There you go. There you go. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So why should, just real quick, why should they vote for you, though? Why specifically you? Well, As opposed to somebody who may have already the information and the knowledge and the wisdom that institutional knowledge that's already there. Why should they vote for you specifically? Well, I think experience means a lot. I've okay. been a... Uh, a, a gatekeeper for um, most of my career of 30 years, whether it was corrections or the sheriff's office. So I understand, you know, there are a lot of bad people out here who, who do bad things. Okay. And I, I take pride in safeguarding that. Okay. Uh, also ha- having a plan, Fairness. knowing that from day one how you have to move out. Mm-hmm. When you are used to dealing with staff and administrating an office, then you know the, the procedures to take and how the city operates. There you go. And those are important stands. Fantastic. Fantastic. So how can I get in contact with you, support you, and all that good old stuff? Where can they find you? Well, the phone number is area code 215-668-8940. Our website is vote. Uh, at wombush.com or you can vote at wombush uh, for registerwills.com. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, thank you for coming to our show, our little independent show. <laughs> right. I appreciate that. has that. a lot of views. And so, uh, we we just want to um, wish you luck and as we say with everybody who come here who's running and this is going to be an interesting race coming up in May. When is it May? May 24th. May 24th. I mean, we have 21st. for 21st. I'm sorry. May 21st. Get out there and vote. I had to put that team 21st. Yes. Get out there and vote, right? Because it's going to be important. Uh, did he have anything up? No. No, okay. fine. Well, there you go. Thank you. Thanks for coming to the show. Thank you. And uh, after you get in, come back. You promise? For sure. There you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy Charles Gray with the beautiful. Lawrence. And the beautiful. And we here right now. Unfortunately, y'all, we got some more. I told you we got a jam-packed show. We got some more people who's running for council. We got everybody in there. I don't want you to go nowhere. We'll be right back, y'all. Holla! Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your girl, Lauren Sizzle, and you are tuned in to one of the hottest talk shows in the nation, We Talk Weekly's After the Talk. Make sure you tune in each and every Tuesday at 7 p.m., and you can listen anywhere. Just download the TuneIn Radio app. Look for WPPM 106.5 FM on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. And I got some good news for you. You want to binge listen to our shows? Follow We Talk Weekly's After the Talk podcast on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, and Spreaker. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out all of our amazing shows and event coverage. And follow We Talk Weekly on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And most importantly, keep it locked. What's up, y'all? This your boy Charles Greg with the beautiful Lauren Sizzle. That's right, we got them the beautiful Class Lady Spark was definitely in the building, man. We got let me tell you something. When I tell you the people are coming, they want to they want to come to our little show, man. We doing <laughs> what we do. I'm, I'm super excited though. I'm super excited about this brother because I know this brother. He's actually running right for city council at large. Like it seems like a thousand other people, right? But this brother is, is the real deal. I've seen him personally, you know. And one thing I say, you know, if you're going to vote, make sure at the very least you vote and be informed with the reason why you're you 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 know you're voting for this particular candidate. So before I go there. Uh, Sizzle, you want to holler at me real quick? So we have Mr. Obona, Paul Hagens mm-hmm. here. He's running for city council at large. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome him to the show. And check this out, right? Brother, 
I see you don't want to work. I'm looking at your Facebook. I'm seeing at your stories. I'm seeing your lives. And, you know, the, the one thing that I see that I don't see um, other candidates do is really be out there, be in the street. And right. you the real deal. Real deal, man. Real this deal. is what I've been doing for the last 30 years. Yeah, I've been representing the disenfranchised, the so-called poor black folks for the last at least 30 years. So I graduated from Dobbins in 1984. Okay. Four and a half years later, the principal, right. Edward Maglioco, shout out to Edward Maglioco. Okay. He called me, said, yo, we are going to shut this architecture class down mm. if you don't come back to teach. Mm. Now, what, what kind of pressure is that, right? Yeah. I'm four and a half years out of high school, mm. and he's calling me. And I'm like, how did he even know who I was? Right, 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 right. But he knew because... I was just a great person in Dobbin. So mm-hmm. I went to I went back. I, I quit my I was self employed. Okay. Architecture is what I do, okay, right? Right, right? And I went back to teach. Mm-hmm. A class that was gonna be closed down with mm-hmm. students that didn't want to be there. And I motivated and inspired them to become winners. Mm-hmm. They won model building and design awards. Mm-hmm. My students are out there affecting the world positively right now. I have a sister that designs cakes. She uses the skills that she learned from architecture class to design cakes, wow, right? Like to me, huh? Oh man, incredible! Then I have a brother, Theo. He was in my class. He's he's working in a few. He's worked in a few firms since he graduated and went to college. I mean, so this is what I what I do. You know, I motivate and inspire. I um, I go out and identify the things that need to be done right. and do it. Action. So I was spotlighting all the dumping that was that's being done okay. throughout the city. Right, right, right. Like I was drive past it like everybody else. And what happens is we just become numb mm-hmm. to the fact that trash and garbage is all around us. But I was like, wow, you know what? I got to vi- video this and just call it out. And this was about a year or year and a half ago. Right. Videoed it, put it on Facebook Live. Next thing you know, the media is calling me. Mm-hmm. The media wants to interview me. What's what's going on here? So I explained that we have failed leadership in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And not just now, but for the last at least 30 years in relationship to Af- African Americans, black people, people of color, whichever right, right. you know words you want to use. Identify, so huh? we know who we are. We are the descendants of the enslaved Africans right. that built this country along with the indigenous people that were already here. So Whatever word you want to use to describe them, that's who I'm basically looking to represent first because we've been in the back. Right. If you look at Philadelphia, we are last in every statistic you can possibly name. Yeah. Violence, uh, education, health disparities, uh, um, uh, mortality rates, uh, I mean jobs, yeah. uh, educate. I mean you name it. And this is with primarily Democratic and black leadership. Mm-hmm. So what does that say? That says that we have had ineffective leadership for our people. They've come up, right. but have their districts come up? Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Have the, any people come up? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Now, they're good people. They're, you know, they mean well, but it's just time for a change. Yeah. Yeah. They have to get out the way and let new 21st century ideas set the stage going forward. You know, you say something that's very interesting in terms of 21st century that I don't see uh, a lot of people running on. Now, your platform, um, as I can see, economics, cleaning and green, and and I want to talk about the cleaning and green that you specifically uh, address, the environment, uh, employment, entrepreneurship, but more specifically, or I don't want to kind of put this on its own island, but still, still education. Right. Science, technology, engineering, and math. Right. And the, in our background is putting the A in STEM to make it STEM. Arts. The arts. Absolutely. This, this is what we're Absolutely. doing, right? And so let's talk a little bit about that because I'm, I'm, we get economics and we get all that. So let's talk a little bit about that, your STEM right. kind of, so, pla- that part of your platform. Right? So I have a friend of mine who is a forensic uh, scientist. She works for the uh, police department. Antoinette. Um, Antoinette. Twins. Yeah. Great friend on. of ours. Yeah. So, look, so you know what she does. Yes. She identifies all the drugs and, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, illegal drugs. She, she identifies that stuff. Right. And it's so much work in those areas. Mm-hmm. So that's the science end. Then you have the technology end, which is look at your cell phone. Right. 
the, what you have in your hand a computer, yep. is a computer that used to take up an entire block mm-hmm. and yeah. about five stories. We got it in our hands. Right. Mm-hmm. So I often ask people, if you like were 25 years ago, right before it all you know, came out like that, and somebody told you that this would exist, what would you say? Mm. You would say, yo. I would be a millionaire. Yeah. I would be able to do this. I can find out anything about anything at any given time. Right. Well, I want to motivate and inspire and lead in that area where we can have people who are entrepreneurs mm-hmm. using just their cell phone. And I'm doing it right now by putting things on Macari, Offer offer Up, mm-hmm. Let Go, mm-hmm. uh, 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 eBay. Mm-hmm. And these are things that you can say you can take. You can go to the thrift store mm-hmm. and you identify some things. Google it real quick on your phone, on your uh, uh, computer, mm-hmm. right? Oh, wow. These are some uh, true religion jeans. Mm-hmm. Oh, snap. Let me see if they have the, the code. Okay. $150? Mm-hmm. Well, they're only $10. In it. Let me get these. Boom. Mm-hmm. Take a picture. Put it on. A day or two later, somebody in the world is buying it. Mm-hmm. So that's business that we can be doing on all kinds of levels with all types of things. Right. And that's what I've been doing. So, look, I'm just going to be honest with everybody. Please, please, please. I am what you would call a trash picker. Mm-hmm. But I'm an architect. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm a writer, publisher. Here's my magazine here. You're talking I, about literally. Literally, I go in the trash of Philadelphia and I find watches. Right, right, right. So, it's about waste, not one. Not. I find jackets. Mm-hmm. I find glasses. I find clipboards. Right, right. I find pencils. All these things that we have to buy, I find on a regular basis, cameras. So, so this is an excellent transition to talk about the green part. Right. right. So let's let's jump into that because that's part of your platform also, right? Right. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So going back to the economic piece, though, right, too, right? right? Right, Sneakers and shoes. There are 2.5 million pair of footwear purchased every week mm. in America. Mm-hmm. The majority are worn maybe... 20% mm-hmm. and then they're tossed. Yeah. So they still have use right. and they still have a value. So what I've been doing is going through the streets of Philadelphia, finding bags and bags and bags of sneakers and shoes. Mm-hmm. I have people from other country that buy those shoes and sneakers from me. Mm-hmm. Very nominal price because they have to pay for shipping. Right. They have to pay to unload it when they get there. Mm-hmm. They have to pay to ship them to the different villages. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is that from what we consider trash, I've created an absolute business that will never stop as long as there are people. And as long as we are in a capitalistic society, mm-hmm. we're going to always be buying stuff and throwing stuff away. So now let me relate this to me running for office. Okay. Am I going to let waste happen, happen in Philadelphia? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Am I going to be the council person that's, that has all the high price suits on and stuff like that? Maybe, because I'll go to the thrift store and get it. But don't get it misconstrued. But more than likely... Oh, you might have Charles Gregory high. <laughs> but, but the thing is, I want to look like the people. Right. I don't want to be all up here and looking down on people. I want people to feel comfortable mm-hmm. with coming to talk to me as their representative. Not their leader, but as their representative. So that's, this is another great transition to ask the question, why should they vote for you? I represent change. I represent what hasn't been happening for the last 30 years, and my history just dictates it. I'm, I'm open for a challenge, like when the principal called me. I'm not about money. So I didn't mention to you that I did quit my teaching job after about eight and a half, nine years. Mm. But I quit because my twins were going to be born. Ah. Okay, so I had to make a decision. My wife at the time, she wanted to still work. She was working at... Um, Vibe magazine at the time, Mm -hmm. and she was making six figures. Mm. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be Mr. Dad because I am not letting my children go to a daycare Mm -hmm. with people that that don't have my same values, that are not going to teach them the same way that I would want them to, are not going to feed them the types of food. So I quit that teaching job. And at this point, I would have had about a 30 year pension waiting for me. Mm. So most people would be like, you know what? You're an appointed teacher. You better stay in that job to get that money. I got a question for you. Sure. Uh, and, um, you know, we had a couple uh, candidates come here, and one of the questions I asked is this tax abatement. What's your thoughts on that? Oh, come on. It helped initially. 
the, the, the philosophy was that if you get developers to come in and you, and you don't have uh, have them paying the taxes for 10 years, for though. 10 years. Mm-hmm. Right. That it'll help to to build Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. But they didn't take into consideration the long term residents or the, yeah, the, the long term residents and wh- how it would affect them. Mm-hmm. So I have a plan for that. Wow. That's, I that's have a plan great. to actually minimize gentrification. Mm-hmm. Or minimize the effects that it has on the long-term residents. Banking, Mm. finance, we don't know about it. Myself included, I'm just learning some things about banking and financing that if I've known that 10 years ago, literally I would be a millionaire right now. Wow. And all of the, they could find all of this on your site? In terms well, what I'm going to be doing, we're going to have a workshop before the election okay. specifically dealing with uh, home equity loans okay. versus home equity lines of credit mm-hmm. and what the difference is and how we can take advantage of them if we own properties, if we're buying properties. Again, for the lack of knowledge, people perish. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm an educator. I want to educate the people in Philadelphia. So, no, so, 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 can we, because we only got a little no bit problem, of time. And no I, problem. And you... I, I love where you're going with all this because I haven't heard uh, a candidate. You heard a can- candidate talk about this yet on our show? No. Yeah. So that's 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 concerning to me, right? Right. right. And because it's a lot of people who may watch the show that's not your typical uh, academic, right, right? Right. That's not your typical educator, so right. to speak. And so right. it's a lot of nuance, right? That may f- fly over their head that you're touching, right? So here's the deal, right? Four eight four five four zero Five four three zero. That's my phone number. Wow. Anybody want to contact me, wow. contact me, and we can get you the information for the next workshop. I believe it's going to be on the 27th. We haven't secured a location yet. And this workshop is a fundraiser for my campaign, but it's free to come to get this information. Wow, wow. And when you leave, if you're not totally upset and inspired at the same time mm. that you didn't learn this in school, and that's part of the education reform that I want to bring as well, wow. There's civics that need to be brought back in the schools. We need to have African studies in the, in the class, not just for us as black people, but for everybody else to understand what we went through mm-hmm. and what we're still going through and why we're in the position that we're in right now. Mm-hmm. How, you know, how can we have so many of our black elected officials, mm-hmm. our ancestors died for them to be in that position? And they are not representing the people that our ancestors died for them to represent. So I represent that change. Five, eight is my number. Five, eight to make Philly great. Five, eight to make Philly great. I'm going to ingrain that in people's minds and in their heads that I am the only candidate that represents real tra- change and transformation in Philadelphia. I will be re- I would be remiss if I didn't ask you your position on the sugar tax because that has been a gripe of mine right. that a lot of people kind of pander off and right. you know they talk around it but you can't tax the poor to help the poor. There you go. Mm-hmm. So that's essentially Bottom what's line. going on. Fantastic. We got to change that. And there's other things that can be taxed. How about this? Let's look at having our youth go to school in their neighborhoods. Maybe some of them want to go to school in their neighborhoods. We've got to improve the whole system. Yeah. But the then they're not shuttle, shuttle, shuttling people. They're saving money with busing people. Mm-hmm. You see, so it's different innovative ways to raise funds for the wow. school than to just tax people. And that mm-hmm. tax was bogus because only 30% actually went to the schools. Right. Wow. You yep. know, 70% went to the general fund. So we don't know what that money is going to be used for. Yeah. So they lying to the people. Yes, they They lying to the people. And I'm not going to lie to the people. I love it. I love it. I love it. Two more questions. Yes. Uh, you want to jump in with a question? You, got, you good? I'll let you go ahead. Okay. So I, I, I want to know, because um, I like to humanize it. I like right. to humanize um, the candidates to come in. I want you to tell me um, just real quickly um, one thing that no one else knows about you. That you can tell us. This is a special question that I normally ask, but I have found that uh, you know, c- candidate people can relate right. to the things that you know they don't you know <laughs> see in terms of boarded, right. you know, plastered all over, right. and they like, right. yo, th- this person is just like me. H- so here's tell me the what deal. Yeah. My father was murdered when I was two. Okay, so I grew out grew up without my biological father since I was two years old. I could have taken that 
and said, you know what, my father is dead and did anything. But because I have a strong family structure, this is very, very, very important because I really wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for my mom. And I'm not just saying that because she birthed me. My mom really and truly has shown and demonstrated because she's basically financed Mm. this magazine. This magazine was put out because of my mom, my mom. Mm -hmm. So when people say that they benefited from being in this magazine, got to thank my mom. Because my mom sacrificed for me to be able to help people. And she's like asking me, like, where is the money? Mm. You, you, everybody knows you. They always say how great you've been to them. But where is the money? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I thank my mom for believing in me and, and helping me to help other people. Yeah. So what else wouldn't they know? That uh, my, my father was a veteran. Mm-hmm. My father used to walk to school like, ten, like five miles a day. Mm-hmm. That's how much he loved education. And that's where I got it from. Everybody said, you know, you're just like your dad. And that's how I changed my name to Obona, which is an Igbo name, which means the image of his father. Wow. So from growing up and everybody mm-hmm. telling me that, you know, you're just like your dad, when I was looking to, you know, accept an African name, it was Obona because it just mm-hmm. totally detailed who I am and where I came from. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I did want to ask the question. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Just briefly, like, uh-huh. what are your plans should you not win? Because a lot of people talk <laughs> about what they're going to do if they win. Like, what's your plans if you don't well, win? Well, we have a special plan to win. So it's okay. not just about coming on this radio show and okay. getting articles and everything like that. So I get the point, mm-hmm. but we're going to win mm-hmm. one of those seats, mm-hmm. you know, somehow, some way. Mm-hmm. We're going to win one of those seats. But I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing anyway. I mean, that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> so running for office is really just an extension of what I've always done. It's just now I'll be in a position, you know, where I'll have a real soapbox, you know, where I can hire a staff that really wants to work, that's not looking at the clock at 430, waiting to go home, but waiting for the next person who has needs that need to be tended to. That's that's what I'm about. Just let, and I only want to be in for eight years. Right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, but if the people demand me to be in, if they draft me and they say, you know what, we're going to go out and get these signatures for you, we're going to do this, fine, I'll accept it. But I really only want to be in for eight years, make a substantial difference, motivate and inspire people, change the direction of the city. Mm-hmm. And I believe that I'm the only person that can get this Democratic Party together. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. Well, thank Absolutely. you, my brother. Thank you for coming no, to the show. No, thank you, man. Oh, you really fantastic, man. You, you touched something in me today, man. This was a great interview, uh, thank man. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Unfortunately, right. we don't even have a lot of time, yeah. man. I had so many Five other questions. 5-8 to man. make Philly great. 5-8 yeah. to make Philly great. Yep, you know, that's, that's what they look for. How did they find you one more time? Uh, one more again? Uh, Just- uh, uh, at Hagen's. At Hagen's. Right. Uh, a Philly Green Man on Facebook. There you go. 484 540 Five four three zero. Hit Obona Hagens, aka Philly Green Man, up the next councilman at large. There you go. Absolutely. Well, the one thing that we always say is, like, I don't care. Look, we we not we not endorsing no candidate. It's just like if they apply, then that we if they're good for the people. That's who we voting for. Yep. Pretty much as simple as that. You know what I mean? If they're going to affect and, and, and definitely make change, that's who we want. So, unfortunately, we got to go, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy, Charles Gray, with the beautiful. Lawrence. And the beautiful. Lady Check this out. We talk with the After the Talk podcast on iHeartRadio, iTunes, and Spotify, and Spreaker. Make sure you follow us on iHeartRadio, iTunes, and Spotify. And binge listen to our shows and like and follow us on We Talk Weekly's Facebook page. Download the little tune in app, but the look for WPPM on P106.5 FM and tune in every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on We Talk Weekly's After the Talk. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at We Talk Weekly at Charles Gray. At Lauren underscore Sizzle at Sparkle Prices One and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to our We Talk Weekly YouTube channel. And if you're Philly, catch every Monday night, 9 30, Concat 66, Verizon Files 29 and 30. Check this out. We Talk Weekly is one higher than seven. Check this out, streaming. We all around the nation, man. Higher than seven.com and make sure you describe. Now, check this out. I hope y'all ready. Shout out to Afro Philly and NBG Network. We Talk Weekly is now syndicated. You can find us in Atlanta, Baltimore, Birmingham, Chicago, Delaware, Houston, Jacksonville, Los Angeles, Miami, New York, New Jersey, New York City, Philadelphia, and all across the nation. Who do you look for? We Talk Weekly. Man, check this out. Unfortunately, we got to go, ladies and gentlemen. You know we love you. Make sure you follow, 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 subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And better than anything else in the world, make sure you be great because you are the kings and queens. Holla at your boy. Ah!
Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your girl Lauren Sizzle, and you are tuned in to one of the hottest talk shows in the nation. We talk weeklies after the talk. Make sure you tune in each and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. and you can listen anywhere. Just download the TuneIn Radio app. Look for WPPM 106.5 FM on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. And I got some good news for you. You want to binge listen to our shows? Follow We Talk Weeklies after the talk podcast on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, and Spreaker. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out all of our amazing shows and event coverage. And follow We Talk Weekly on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And most importantly, keep it locked.